Secretary Schwartz. I, I had a chance, as I referenced before, I had the, the opportunity to read the essay that you wrote, which was beautiful in terms of what brought you here and, and your upbringing. And I'm curious what's been uh, the most meaningful for you in, in terms of you know, two years studying with Rabbi Dutz, five years that you said that you haven't been eating um, pork and shellfish and other things. It sounds like this process has been going on for a long time. Um, that you've thinking, been thinking about becoming Jewish. And so I'm curious, you know, one, where did that start uh, in terms of, you said, this is something that I want to pursue, and then what's been the most meaningful thing for you in that process? Um, the most meaningful thing for me was being able to come to the service and actually know what's going on. That was meaningful because it, you know, shows the culmination of all your study and, you know, the questions that you ask and uh, your perspective on things. So that was meaningful. Also, what brought me to that decision? Mm -hmm. I mean, I didn't read the constructs of uh, Christianity that I was raised in um, from a mental colonialist perspective. I didn't identify. I've always identified Christianity as like the identity of the Catholics because there's nobody in my family that's Christian by free will, and I know that my grandfather's father was a slave, and that's where he got it from. And the same, you know freedom in Christ that they would preach about was the same freedom they had to, you know, murder him or whoever they choose to. So I'm 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 a I'm a free man, I'm not a slave, so I don't want to practice that. Because it was given under horrible pretenses and I just had no attachment to it. Mm -hmm. So I just want to totally break away from it. like you had a lot of support, which is really wonderful, and I appreciate you being so communal with your vision, so um, I'm glad to see that you have so many people here who are supporting you. Speaking of support, we have always, we introduce some of them as your, as your family and friends, um, your parents from Louisiana, you said couldn't be here, are they supportive of this as well? Um, honestly, no, but it's not out of a place of... Um, intolerance or you know fear it's just that I was raised a certain way and they expect things to be done a certain way so when I stepped away from Christianity and told them why they didn't agree with it but when I, my mom came here I brought her to the shul and she saw everything and she was like well as long as you're going to somebody's house to pray then, then that's fine I'm, I'm totally fine with that I asked her how was the service she said no it's nice All right. so, <laughs> so you know she's totally not they totally don't understand because I'm not there actively doing it with them. Mm -hmm. And so there's things that, that they don't get, but they're, they're supportive. They're supportive in my, in my decision without fully understanding what that decision means. Mm -hmm. um, you mentioned in your essay that you know, you're know you planning already to have a family and send the children to Hillel. And, um, what do you think you know, as a father uh, and as a husband, what are some of the important features that distinguish that uh, being a Jewish father or Jewish um, husband that maybe is uh, different from you know, the way you were brought up or the way you the way you thought of being a parent before? Well, I was always brought up with love and discipline. Love always came first. And discipline came when you know you needed to be corrected, but that discipline was out of love too. So I really don't see any difference aside from you know observing things the Jewish way and observing things just the Christian way. But it's it's not too different from from, from my upbringing. So those principalities would still be in my household. Educating and, and, and I think your parents emphasized education a lot oh, with your family. <laughs> what are you most looking forward to as a, as a Jew? Um, I guess being able to bridge the gap between Jews all across the world, because there's not a good there's not a good relationship between all Jews, and you know the fellowship people see me as a Jew and African American, so they start to ask questions, and asking questions is clarity. And when it's clear, there's understanding. When there's understanding, there's acceptance. So that's what I'm most looking forward to. Um, I have one 
more question for you, and that is, um, how do you feel about uh, Christian holidays, especially uh, Christmas? How does that now, um, if your family is observing it and uh, you're Jewish, what, how, do you, how are you going to handle that? Go over to the house and drink some nog. <laughs> <laughs> um, but <clears throat> those practices won't be in my house. But I think that it would be even more disrespectful to my family to say, oh, I'm a Jew. I don't do that. So don't invite me. I mean, I'm going to go and be part of it. But it's just not, some, it's not something that I celebrate. Okay. Well, I, I don't know if I'll, I'll ask you if you want, if you want, if if God forbid you were in the situation where your Jewishness pitted you against people, would you cast your lot with the Jews even if it meant giving up your life? One more time. <laughs> if if God forbid you were in a situation where being Jewish pitted you against society or against people, even to the point where it cost you your life. Would you die? Would you prefer to die as a Jew, or would you uh, renege on your conversion? I prefer to live. But, uh, well, I'm saying, God forbid, this situation would occur. But I'm saying, if for, if God forbid, they're like all the Jews, bad things are going to happen. I think he answers. You know, would you choose the side of the Jews, even if it meant your life? I think he answers. I, I, I prefer to live, but I do what was necessary to preserve the lives of my fellow Jews as well. And anybody else that would come. Judaism tells you to choose life. Right. Yes. Even right. if it means breaking commandments, you're right. supposed to choose life. Right. Absolutely. Right. And in our history, as we've known, we we often had to pretend that we were doing something else. Or, Correct. You know, so, yes. Yeah. So it's not the three things that we're really asked to give up our life for if somebody forces us, tries to force us to commit murder, adultery or incest and uh, or idolatry but that's uh, that those situations hopefully are rare and, um, but that has nothing to do with you know otherwise it's all about preserving life so, yeah. okay, so go the hall. we are going to go across the hall now and, uh, okay. and uh, we can all go and be in the uh, waiting out, outside waiting room there